to start the prayers. Om Patram Karane Bhishunyama Deva Patram Pashe Maksha Bhirya Jatra Stirai Rangai Hi Sushtubhagum Sashtanubihi Vyashema Deva Hi Thamyadayu Sastina Indro Vridhashtava Swastina Pusha Vishwaveda Swastina Stakshora Rishtanemi Swasti no brehaspatir dadatu Om Shanti 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 Mandukya Upanishad is a very unique Upanishad which gives a, a, a totally new meaning for Omkara. We will see the meaning and uh, understand how we are able to realize our true self using Omkara as a tool for meditation. We have so far covered Atma Vichara and Atma Vichara is analysis of the three experiences which we have in the waking state, dream state and the sleep state. So Mandukya is divided into two portions, Atma Vichara, Omkara Vichara. So let's go now straight to the point that we stopped last week. So this Ishvara is introduced to us through Omkara Vichara. Now what is this Omkara Vichara which is described in mantra number 8? Abhideya Pradana Omkara Ishvara. See, Omkara, we have studied before also. And what we have said is, it has got four padra, four matras. The Chatushpad Omkara Vichara is what it is the introduction of Shankaracharya in this particular uh, introduction mantra for mantra number eight. Let us chant the eighth mantra of the Upanishad and then we'll see the meaning through Shankarachi. Soya Matma Soya Matma Adhyakshara Momkara Adhyaksara Momkara Adhimatram Adhimatram Pada Matra Pada Matra Matrascha Pada Matrascha Pada Akara Ukaro Makara Iti Akara Ukaro Makara Iti Soya Matma Adhyakshara Momkaro Adhimatram Pada Matra Matrascha Pada Akara Ukaro Makara Iti this Atma, which is described in the first seven mantras, is now being described as O, with the standpoint of letters, with the standpoint of the sound O, now we will analyze the Atma. The eighth mantra and the ninth mantra are introductions to Omkara Vichara. The 10th mantra, 11th mantra, and the 12th mantra, they are talking about the actual meaning of Akara, Ukara, Makara. Now, the four letters of Om are described as the four quarters, four padas. Now, what are the what are the Letters in Om A U Ma. So when you chant Om, 
it is a combination of these three letters. That is what Shankaracharya describes. That is what the Upanishad describes in this eighth mantra. And this Omkara can be described as Saguna or Nirguna. Suppose we say it is the sound Om, then it is the it is the Shabda Vichara, sound. If it is the silence, then it becomes the Atma Vichara, which is Amatra. Now, whenever we study the meaning of Omkara, it is called as Abhideya Pradhanam. These are two technical words used by Shankaracharya. Whenever we are analyzing the word, there are two things we are talking about. One is the meaning of the word. Another is the alphabet. Pada. Pada vichara and uh, the meaning vichara. Pada vichara is called as abhidanam. Now, atma vichara, when you say it is the meaning of Omkara. When we say Pada Vichara, it is Abhidana Vichara. These are technical terms, you don't have to bother, but this is the way Shankaracharya presents it. Now, what is Turiyam, which is described in the seventh mantra, what is that? That is the Adhishtanam for the entire universe. And that consists of the, there are two parts to that Adhishtana, one, uh, the, uh, two, the two parts to the Turiyam. One is Adhishtana of the universe, the second is the words which reveal the universe. The words which reveal the universe, there is a revealer and a revealed relationship between the, the, uh, the words and the meaning. There is a sambandha. Abhidana, abhideya, sambandha means between the word and the meaning, there is a sambandha, sambandha the relationship. Then Shakaracharya says that the same whatever we have studied as Atma is, can be known by the syllables, which are there called adhyaksharam. Atma is discussed before. Now, previously we have discussed Shabda Rupena Vartiyate. That means we have discussed the word meaning before Soyam Atma Dyaksharam Varniyate. Atma is going to be analyzed with the help of words of Omkara. The Upanishad itself does this. It is not Shankaracharya. Upanishad itself has got from verse number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Five mantras are there. Now these five mantras will explain to us exactly what was taught in the first portion of Atma Vichara. The same waking state, dream state, sleep state we are going to study again. Same, exactly the same what we have studied as the four quarters of Atma. Now it is the four quarters of the letters of Omkar. How do they split up these four letters? We are going to study in detail. Atma is equated to Omkara. Suppose we say, what is Omkara? The general meaning of Omkara is it is God's name. But when we say it's God's name, it, it, is, it, it will not take us to God directly. When we understand the God's name through the letters and meditate on it, then we are able to reach the form of God, which is formless. So the, uh, the, the Chatur Matra, four alphabets, when it is meditated correctly as per Mandukya Upanishad, 
we will reach the silence portion, which is the same as the seventh mantra of the Upanishad. What are the four parts? Pada matraha, padascha matraha. The first portion is the akara, which is the vishwa and virat. Ukara is taijasa and hiranyagarbha. The third, ma. We have got three letters, a, u, ma. A stands for the individual vishwa, whom we call it as vishwa, with a gross body experience. A. Ah. What about U? U stands for Taijasa, which is the same Jeeva when he is in the dream state, experiencing what? The dream body, which is made up of thoughts. Even in the dream, the, the Jeeva is there. But in what form? Not in the Vishwa physical body form, but in the dream state, he is in the subtle form. That is represented by U. Then the last pada, Ma. Ma stands for Pragna, the sleep state. So all the three states are beautifully covered in this O. That is what the Upanishad reveals. This meaning you don't get anywhere else. We study Omkara, Upasana in Prashna Upanishad, in Katho Upanishad, in other Upanishads also. But the meaning of Omkara revealed in Mandukya Upanishad representing the three states of experience is very, very unique. And when you do a meditation on this, the Upanishad says, you will reach your true identity. The silence is the Amatra. We call it a matra. That means there is no matra there, but it is silence. Now, this silence, it is abhava rupam. Bhava rupam or abhava rupam. Turiyam is bhava rupam. Chaitanyam, which reveals the act of sound. But when we say it is abhava rupam, we use the bachyartha. Vachyartha means there is a lakshyartha and vachyartha for the silence. The lakshyartha is the bhavaru. That means it is the silence is indicating to us something. That is what you should not miss. See, when we when we chant Om, oh, I have done Omkara meditation many times. Now, after chanting Om, oh, you remain silent. That silence is not absence of sound, but it is not abhava rupam, but it is bhava rupam. Bhava means what? That silence is experienced by us when the chaitanyam, when the consciousness is revealing the absence of the sound. So that is why this is where we differ from the uh, Bauda philosophers. The Bauda philosophers say it is non-existence. There is shunyam, absolute nothingness. But what we say is that is not correct. What is the right interpretation of the silence? The right interpretation of the silence is it is Chaitanya which is revealing that there is no universe. Therefore, what? If I take the Chaitanya, Chaitanya as my Swarupa, it is my Swarupa. It cannot be objectified. It has to be only known as my nature. Nature means what? That is what I will always go back to. That is why many times I say in the sleep, you go back to your original nature. This nature of ours, when we are in the waking state, is only a reflection of that. It is only a reflection. It is only a chaya. It is only a shadow. We have seen this in Kathopanishad. condition. So, Amatra is Bhavarupaha. That is what is said 
in the in this eighth mantra which introduces the letters of Om God. Okay, so that is the meaning of this verse. It is an introductory verse of the Upanishad which says that the four padas which we have seen are the four matras, the alphabets of Omkara. It is a general introduction for the Omkara meditation introduced by the Upanishad and which also says that the silence which we experience is not nothingness but it is Bhavarubha, consciousness is there. That is why we always get a feeling that we always exist. See, when we go to sleep, what is our, our experience? I always exist. I exist. I exist. I exist. That existence, we have to separate from our mind. That is intellectually. What we have to say in our mind in meditation, the mind becomes the waker, dreamer, sleeper. I am always of the nature of Turiyam or silence. This is how the Upanishad reveals my true nature. Next is, in the next paragraph, Shankaracharya introduces the next mantra, which is mantra number seven. What does he say? He says that with reference to a general equation, which we have studied in the eighth mantra, about the four padas and the four matras, can we equate at random any month, any pada with any uh, a matra, or is there an order? For example, can we say A matra is Turiyam, U matra is Vishwa, and Ma matra is Taijasa? See, Shankaracharya is so brilliant. He goes into very, very big details about analysis of the Upanishad. Upanishad has said there are four specific equations. A matra goes for the maker, U matra goes for the dreamer, Ma matra goes for the prajna. And this is the way we have to study is Shankaracharya's conviction. It has to be used correctly. Omkara is prescribed generally for Madhyam Adhikaris who are not able to understand the meaning of Turiyam directly. See, if you are able to understand Turiyam from the seventh mantra, Shankaracharya says that is enough for you. You don't need to come to Omkara meditation. For those people who are not able to understand and claim that Turiyam is my real nature, for them the Upanishad use, he, Upanishad itself introduces Omkara meditation. The sound R and the sound and the sound M mm, these sounds, they represent the, the, the entire state of experience. But in silence, what happens? Sushupti is falsified as Mithya. Then what is left out is Adhishthana Chaitanya. The entire Omkara journey of Omkara in meditation helps us to resolve the entire prapancha, all the three prapanchas into silence. That is how we have to do meditation on Omkara. There is a meaning to that silence. In Vichara Sagara, Nishchala Dasa, in all Grahasthas, to do Omkara Dhyanam. And it is called as Panchi Karanam. Shankaracharya writes one and a half pages of commentary on Panchi Karanam. Sureshwaracharya, his disciple, also writes another beautiful co commentary on Panchi Karanam. This is a slightly advanced uh, 
text for omkara meditation itself panchi karana there is a text called as panchi karana those who are interested they can study that now what is the purpose of these four equations equation means what a matra is equal to waking world and the waker so we have to sensitize our mind by doing this omkara after doing the shravanam and mananam we have to meditate on this type of uh, omkara meditation so that our mind can become more subtle because we have to you see in the in the in the journey spiritual journey all of us have to go through a journey the journey means what from the physical world we have to reach turiya from the gross we have to go to the subtle from the subtle we have to go to the causal and from the causal we have to reach the adhisthana turiya in prashna upanishad in the fifth chapter a very beautiful omkara upasana is taken up i will be doing prashna upanishad for the saturday classes after i finish kato upanishad i will be doing a bhashya of shankara bhashya on prashna upanishad on saturdays roughly in about two weeks time so if you are interested to attend a bhashya again of another upanishad then you can you can join the saturday classes so akara ukara akara resolve into turiyam now what is the, what is the third mantra of what is the third mantra of mandukya upanishad it describes the akara akara means it describes the waking state and what how does the waking state describe in the waking state we are conscious of the world of objects gross objects that is the prathama pada so ninth mantra shankara acharya says is an introduction to the waking state of which is exactly the same as what we studied in the third so the third mantra of the upanishad and the ninth mantra of this upanishad they are talking about the same state let us chant the ninth mantra and uh, then we will go to the meaning of the ninth jagarita sthano jagarita sthano वैश्वानरो वैश्वानरो अकारह अकारह प्रथमा मात्राह प्रथमा मात्राह अप्ते रादि मत्वाद अप्ते रादि मत्वाद वापनोति हवै वापनोति हवै सर्वान कामान आदिश्च सर्वान कामान आदिश्च भवति भवति य एवं वेद य एवं वेद जागरितस्थानो वैश्वानरो यकारह प्रथमा मात्राह आप्ते रादि मत्वा द्वापनोति हवै सर्वान कामानादिश्च भवति य एवं वेद दिस मंत्र नाइन्थ मंत्र introduces the akara the first letter of omkar it will explain to you how this is relevant for the meditation 
what are the common features between the Akara and the first Pada and how by doing this meditation we can slowly progress in our spiritual journey. So Akara is a symbol. Omkara is a alambanam. It is a symbol. It is a symbol used for God. It is a symbol used for reaching God some. Now in the third mantra, we have said there is a Virat Devata. When we see the world, we should understand there is a Devata behind this gross world, which we call it as Virat. There is a Devata behind the dream world, which is called as Hiranyagarbha. There is a Devata behind the sleep state, totally, which controls the sleep state. Devata is a controller. Now, this, in the sleep state, it is called as Ishvara or Antaryami. We have seen in the third mantra how this Virat Devata is Saptangaha, Eko Vimshati, and the Stula book. We have seen these three words in the it basically describes the nature of Ishwara into different different components of the universe. We have seen the head. It, we have seen, you know, this is the same thing as what we have done in uh, which we do in uh, Vishwa, uh, uh, Vishnu Dhyanam in uh, Sah the uh, uh, Dhyana Shloka. Many Dhyana Shlokas of Ishwara are there. The chapter 11 of the uh, Bhagavad Gita is also the Dhyanam of Virat Ishwara. Now, what are the similarity between Virat, Vaishwanara and Amatra? Why do we equate Virat, the Lord, with the Amatra? which is of Omkara, there are two, there are two similarities. One is called as Vyapti and second is called as Adimatva. There are two technical words used by the Upanishad itself. It is Aptihi and Adihi Matva. Aptihi means it is pervasive. You see, uh, Lord Vira is Everywhere in the universe. He pervades the entire universe. Now, in the let, that is what is called as Aptihi, pervasive nature of the law. Similarly, the word A, the letter A is pervasive. How is it pervasive? Because when you open your mouth without doing anything, the A when you say the first sound which comes from a baby is ah. Just by opening the mouth, when the air goes through the tongue, it is the sound ah. So the mother will say, come on to the baby, say ah, ah, and then it will feed the it will feed the baby. Now, what about the letter U and Ma? They are the modifications of the letter A. Ah. Like clay can modify into different parts, the letter A can modify into different, different other letters and other sounds which we are using in our language. In all languages, Shankaracharya says in any language, a matra is the fundamental. All sounds are Nothing but modifications of Akara, Aksharam. Aksharam Akara is the Karanam. All other letters in all languages is Karyam. Therefore, Karanam pervades all Karyam. 
This is a very uh, technical way of explaining the significance of the letter A, how it is being used in the Upanishad for the Ra. This is purely academic for understanding and uh, the significance between Amatra and the entire creation. Because we want to go from the gross world to the subtle world, we have to use this Amatra to come to the subtle nature of letters. What happens when the Baker Atma, so the Baker's, the baking state is the state which we compare to the Amat. The baking state is the first Pada, the first Matra is Akara. What is our journey? We have to go through this waking dream and sleep towards the Turiya. Ultimately, our our uh, goal is to real, but we have to start with Virat and then uh, uh, in this Omkara Vichara, we have to start from the waking state and go on to the dream and the sleep and then to the, at last to the Turiya. Now, Shankaracharya gives the uh, Aitare Upanish, Aranyaka and all that. The references are given here uh, of the, uh, the, the significance behind the Akara. Now, in this particular paragraph, he quotes Aitare Aranyakam. Normally, we study Aitare Upanishad, which is a part of Aitare Aranyakam. Now, there in that, he says that the significance of pervasiveness of this uh, Omkara is explained. You see, the, 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 there is a lot of references which we don't know when we study the Upanishad. We, uh, normally, we will never get into this type of analysis. How does, how does Shankar Acharya say that this is the Akara represents the pervasive nature because he has studied Aitariya Aranyakam, which is a very, very big text consisting of six chapters. The third, fourth, and sixth, uh, the, the fourth, fifth, and sixth chapter of the Aranyakam is Aitariya Upanishad, which we will be doing uh, for the Saturday class sometime. So, in that open, in that Aranyakam, Aranyakam, it is said that this is what pervasiveness, uh, the pervasiveness of Virat Devata is compared to Akara. Same thing is said in Chandogya Upanishad, chapter 5, verse 18, uh, section 18, and the second verse. Now, these are all the references given by Shankaracharya to explain to us the significance of Akara and how it is related to the Virat Ishvara in the form of pervasion of the word as well as the Lord Ishwar, uh, the Lord Virat. So universe is pervaded by Virat Ishwara. The words are pervaded by the letter Akara. Akaro vai sarva bhat. This is mentioned in Aitareya Aranyata in chapter 2, 3, 6. This is what Shankaracharya quotes to give the explanation of pervasiveness. In Chandogya Upanishad, this is the mantra, 5.18.2, where it says that Vaishvanara uh, consists of all the portions of, which we have seen when we did the uh, third mantra, we studied this, man, this particular mantra of Chandogya Upanishad, where Virat Devata is explained in his form is explained in this mantra, in Chandogya Upanishad. How does it explain? The upper region of the universe are his eyes. The Surya and Chandra are his pranas. Uh, then nose is, uh, sorry, there is some mistake here. Surya and Chandra are the eyes, upper region. Uh, 
mouth is the agni. Uh, okay, I just refer to this, uh, the mantra itself. Uh, the air, the, the, the air is represented, air is represented in the upper region. There's a mistake here in the slide. I will get it corrected. So the different parts of the Virat Devata, the feet are, is, this is purely for meditation. The feet of the Devata is looked at as the Prithivi, as the Prithivi which we experience on the, on, in, the, in our uh, waking state. Mouth is the Agni Devata. The nose is the Prana Devata. Then Surya and Chandra are the eyes. The upper region is the air which we breathe. Now, in Vishnu Sharsnama also, there's a Dhyana Sloka. Bhupada, yes, this particular mantra, everybody knows. This is how Lord Vishnu is visualized in meditation. Okay? Like the Shabda pervades the Artha. That means the entire world which we experience is in the form of words only. How do we describe the world? In the form of words. And in the form of words, which is the first one, it is Akara, which is all pervasive. Okay. So this is how Shank Shankaracharya explains to us that Adi Matva, that means the first thing which we understand in the world is this, in the words is Akara, the Adi, that is the first uh, first alphabet. Similarly, in the in the in our meditation, the Virat Devata is the first Devata which we meditate on. There is oneness between the Virat Devata and the letter A. That is what we should understand as a significance in this ninth verse. Okay, so what does the ninth verse say? The ninth verse says that Akara. And the wish and the waking state, Virat, Devata, have to be equated for meditation. So every object in the world is nothing but name and form. This is what we have studied in Chandogya Upanishad, sixth chapter. It says the entire world can be described as name and form. Vacharambadam vikaro namadeyam mrittikayeva satyam Clay is satyam, but what is the, what is, what is mithya? What is mithya? Clay is satyam. So what, the, what, what, what is the significance behind this? What we say is, all the names and forms which are formed out of the letter A is all mithya. What is what is left out when we when we drop the mithya, mithya name and form is satyam, which is atma, which is thuriya. Okay. To know this Brahman, we have to start with Virat Devata. To know all the letters, we have to start with the first letter, which is A. The knowledge of the universe is consisting of the knowledge of Vira, Hiranyagarbha, and Ish. The whole creation is nothing but the name and form of this Devatas. Okay. What do we get? What is the phalam of this of this upasana? Shankaracharya goes into that also. He says there are two types of phalam. When we do the akara upasana, you can do an akara upasana by itself. And what is the phalam? What is the benefit of that upasana? He says you can have a materialistic. Uh, you can have a materialistic uh, benefit. Or you can have a spiritual benefit. When you do the Akara Upasana for spirituality, then it, you will get Chitta Shuddhi. 
and chitta ekagrata. Ekagrata shuddhi means purity. Purity of your mind, oneness of your mind, and expansiveness of your mind. These are the three benefits of doing akara upasana. One attains these three things when you do when you do this akara upasana. Now, if you are interested in the world, what happens? Shankaracharya says, you will get the entire world. Whatever you are meditating on, you will keep on experiencing those things again and again. Suppose you meditate on a car. You will get your car. You will meditate on a yeah, this thing. But then you have to relate it. See, by relating it to Akara, you will get either in the world of things and objects or you will get Chitta Shruti. For all this, the, the, uh, the Shruti, the Veda is the Pramana. Whatever, whatever is the benefit which we study here, it is said in the Veda. The benefit of doing the vasana and the benefit of what we can achieve. Next is an introduction to the 10th mantra. See, the Omkara's upasana is just described for us. It is, a, it is, it is for meditation purpose. And uh, sometime later on, I will take up an actual meditation on Omkara as prescribed by the uh, Upanishad. After we have completed this Omkara med uh, meditation verses, I will take up one session of the meditation itself on Omkara. Now the 10th mantra, we'll chant, we'll see how the chanting goes. Svapnasthanas Tejasaha Svapnasthanas Tejasaha Ukaro Dvitiya Matra Ukaro Dvitiya Matra Utkarsha Dubhayatva Dva Utkarsha Dubhayat Dvadva Utkarshati Havai Utkarshati Havai Jnana Santa Tim Jnana Santa Tim Samanas Chap Bhavati Samanas Chap Bhavati Nasya Brahma Vitkule Bhavati Nasya Brahma Bitkule Bhavati Ya Evam Veda Ya Evam Veda Swapna Swap So here, the, the, what we are describing is Taijasa. The second letter, Ukara, we have finished Ukara in the ninth mantra. Akara stands for the waking state. The, the, the middle letter, Ukara, stands for the dream state. It is called as Taijasa. And this state, one who meditates on Omkara, on the Ukara, he will enjoy certain benefits. We'll see what are those benefits. The, but the main thing you should understand is Ukara stands for the dreams. So, why do we say Akara, Ukara, Makara? It covers the entire world of experiences. That is what we should say. That is what we should, we should uh, understand. All our experiences in the world are covered in this three, these three alphabets. So, doing this Upasana is extremely important for a person who wants to reach Surya. Other people are not required. You see, for others, this it doesn't make any, it is just academic interest. Uh, you know, it is uh, these three things are explaining to us the three states. Now, there is the, the fourth mantra of the, uh, the fourth mantra, the Upanishad. This is the fourth mantra of the uh, Mandukya Upanishad, which we have studied. 
that exactly what we studied for the fourth mantra, we have to bring it and understand the fourth mantra is also the tenth mantra is also talking about Ukara. Ukara means dream state. Dutiya matra is the second equation. In the second equation, what happens? Taijasa is at the individual level. Hiranyagarbha is at the total. The devata of the dream state is called as Hiranyagarbha. Like we have seen in the waking state, the individual is called as Vishwa. And the total devata responsible for the waking state is called as Vira. So here it is Hiranyagarbha. Now, what the common features between uh, which we have seen for Virat uh, and um, for Virat, we have seen the common features before. Now we have got to see what is the common features which are there in the Hiranyaka and uh, also try to understand the letter U. Taijasa is the Karanam for Vishwa. That is the common feature. The subtle body is a common is 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 responsible for the gross body. Subtle body comes from air, comes from the Karana Sharira. So subtle body is the in-between, like the door sill, which connects the two rooms. In between, there is a uh, in between, it's called the linking. So, Ukara links the Pragna. Ukara means the second letter. It is the link. It is the link between two letters. Between the first letter A and the last letter Ma. So, between the waker and the sleeper, the intermediary stage is called as the Ukara. Okay, quite simple. You see, once we understand Akara, Ukara, Makara stands for the waking dream and sleep, then all these things are very easy to understand. So traveling through this alone, we get Nirguna Brahman. When we do this type of, this type of analysis of Akara, Ukara, Makara, we will reach the final goal of Turiyam Brahma. One who meditates on this, he becomes non-controversial person in life. This is what Shankaracharya says. When you meditate on the Ukara, first we have seen Akara's benefits. You become, you, you, uh, you can get all your desires fulfilled if you meditate on the Akara because you become the Prathama. Now, Dhritiya Pada, the, uh, the Upasaka, he goes to the subtle worlds. He becomes, he, he is able to be, go deeper into the other world of Makara. You see, from Ukara, we have to go to Makara. So, the, what is the Phalam? Upa, the Upasaka becomes a Brahmanyani. When he follows this part of Ukara, reaches Makara and then he is able to draw all the three states and own up the last state which is Turiya Avastha as his real nature. So it is one Upasana in four stages Makara, Ukara, Makara and the silence. This is what we call it as meditation on O. Okay, so this is the revision portion for the month for the tenth mantra in this slide. Uh, if I have not covered anything, I will take it. Uh, so this akara ukara we can do independent meditation also, but the the ultimate benefit is. When you take all the three letters and meditate together in one meditation, it is possible. 
What Shankaracharya says is you can meditate on Nakara and then come out of it. Then you can meditate on Ukara, come out of it. Meditate on Makara, come out of it. But then you don't get the full benefit of reaching Turiya. So Akara, Makara, if you can meditate together, ultimately gives you the final benefit of Omkara meditation. Independent Upasana is for Madhyama Adhikaris. But if you can do complete Upasana, it is for Uttam Adhikari. That means your mind can go from or in all or it can go from Akara, Ukara, Makara, all the three from gross, subtle and the causal universe. Okay, so this is the 10th mantra. Now let us go to the 11th mantra. See, uh, then the 12th mantra is the final. After the 12th mantra, we will have, uh, after the 11th mantra itself, we will have some karikas. Karikas, like how we have seen, what does Gaudapada Acharya think about the these, uh, these mantras? We will, we will do some commentary on these mantras after the 11th mantra. Then there will be the 12th mantra, like the 7th mantra. 7th mantra and the 12th mantra are together. Exactly the same. What we have studied in the 7th, we will study in the 12th. Now let us understand the 11th mantra. Sushupta sthana pragnyaha Sushupta sthana pragnyaha Makara strutiya matra Makara strutiya matra Mitera piterva Mitera piterva Minoti hava idagum servum Minoti hava idagum servum Api tischa bhavati Api tischa bhavati Ya evam veda Ya evam veda Sushuptas thai This eleventh uh, mantra is compared to the ma the ma mantra that means in Omkara, A, Uma, the third letter M stands for the sleep state. In the sleep state, the individual is called as what? Pragna. And the total is called as what? The Devata which controls that sleep state is called as Andar Yami. That is the word which is used in the Upanishad. Antarami Ya or Ishvara. The one who meditates on this Makara, he knows the resolution ground of the entire universe. See how beautiful is this Upanishad. Ultimately, we have to reach the formless nature of universe and the formless nature of our self, which is called as Turiyam, which is Abhyavaharyam in which there is no activity at all, in which it is Shantam, Shivam, Advaitam, that is the goal. But through Omkara, I can go from the Virat in the waking state, Ukara in the dream state, Makara in the sleep state, which is the resolution ground of the, uh, of the entire universe. Now, we have studied this feature of Mitihi and Apitihi when we did the Pragna Mantra in the Upanishad. The, the, the sleep state is compared to the resolution ground of the, that is what is called as Apitihi. Mitihi means it is like the measure of the Rat, Vishwa state and the dream state. Why is it called a measure? We have studied this before. Like you have a small measure in which you pour some grains and then you take it out. 
it so the measure is what that measure which we use to uh, to uh, to weigh something to uh, to sell something now this makara is like you pour the entire waking and the dream state into the sleep state from the sleep state you take it out again the waking state so therefore it is compared to a measure Suppose you have a heap, big heap of stock grains and you want to convert, you want to take out to sell a small portion of it, you use a measure. This is a measure which we use. So the grains will enter measure, they will enter the, and then they appear and disappear. They disappear into the measure. Similarly, Makara, when we use, what happens? The waking state, A and O, are like the grains. They are poured into makara, which is called as the measure or the karana shariram prapancha. And then they disappear into it. See how beautifully this is explained by Shankara. He says that like you are measuring a grain into a measure and then you take it out. Similarly, Baking state and dream state are all going and resolving into this sleep state, and then they appear again from the sleep state, they reappear again in the baking state. Therefore, it is called as tihi. Vitihi means it is a resolution ground. So it is a resolution ground and it is of the form of a measure. That is what is Mikara. Layaha is not equal to Moksha. This is a very, very important point you should remember. The sleep state is not regarded as the state of Moksha. It is not, it is not, a, it is not the state of being free. It is a non-dual state, no doubt. It is comparable to Turiyam state, but Moksha is going further down. From the sleep state, you have to go to the Turiya, Turiya the fourth part. Moksha comes by understanding the seventh mantra, which is the Turiya mantra. You have to deliberately bring the knowledge of the Turiya mantra of the seventh mantra in your meditation. Similarly, you have to cross over the sleep state and then ask the question, who am I? Which is a witness to the blankness of the sleep state. That is the final, the final ultimate destination for a meditator. Shankaracharya explains in these paragraphs the details. We don't have to go into some of these details which I have skipped, but what is important is kara ukara makara has to be meditated as the waking state, dream state and the sleep state. By doing this and comparing the features of the waking state with akara, dream state with the ukara and the sleep state with makara, we will be able to cross over to the seventh mantra, which is the avyavaharyam, where there is no vyavahara, but you exist. So, your ex pure existence is where after you have dropped the three states, then you ask yourself, who am I who is witness of these three states? The three states, Vishwa, Taijasa, Pragna, Waker, Dreamer, and Sleeper, are the conditioned state. Conditioned by the word, conditioned by the state of the mind, and conditioned by who we are, because we are identified with our physical body, subtle body, or causal. What is the Thuriyam? It is unconditioned state. It is a state where there is nothing. It is, it, there is no 
mind, there is no shariram, there is no prapancha. It is called as this. It is it is the it is called as unconditioned state in which there is only turiya. Okay, so that is our final des destination for meditation. In each of this, we, we in each of this we understand there are some common features between the waking state and kara, common features between ukara and the dream state, and makara and the sleep state. Okay, I, I have covered most of this. Uh, actually, we uh, uh, the upasaka he. Uh, reaches the Ishvara, which is the cause of the universe. You see, what is Ishvara? The third pada is the Ishvara pada. By knowing Ishvara pada, the third pada, what happens? I know what is the cause of this entire universe. The third, in Mandukya Upanishad, the third pada is the cause, and the first two padas, that means the waking and dream, is the effect. It is the effect. It is the product of the sleep state. Sixth mantra of Mandukya Upanishad, you should remember, Esha Sarveshwara Esha. The Lord, that is why when we go to sleep, you must know that sleep state is not just the state of our body. It is the state in which the entire universe also resolves. We don't look at it from that point of view. We only think it is our own pure mental state. But Upanishad says, in that state, the entire resolution of the world happens. And from there only the entire world emerges out. Now, this is the spiritual significance of the sleep state. Therefore, what do we say? Bhagwan is the material cause of the universe. He is the essence of creation. He knows the entire, he is the omniscient God. He is the one who, who, is, who is responsible for the emergence of the world and the world consists of the individuals also. Okay. In mantra number 12, we will get the knowledge of Nirguna Tattva Ishwara. Ishwara has got two forms. Jiva also has two forms. One is the Saguna version. The second is the Nirguna version. We have already seen in the seventh mantra the Nirguna version of the entire universe. Once again in the in the twelfth verse, we are going to get the Nirguna uh, version explained through the Padas, through the Matras. Okay. So, the purpose of these Upasanas is to know and to reach Aham Brahma Speed. What is the ultimate aim of Omkara Upasana? I should be able to say, I am not Rishwa. I am not the Taitasa, I am not the sleeper. But there is something which is beyond the waking dream and sleep. And that is my real nature. So mantras on the three matras are over. The fourth matra is the main teaching. Now, before we do the fourth mantra, we are going to study Gaudapara Charyas Karikas, which is what we are going to study in the next week. We are going to start with this Karika number 19. And what does Gaudapada Charya say about the three matras? He analyzes the three matras exactly like he analyzed the three padas. Okay, so we will study the Gaudapada Acharyas um, from 19 to 20. Uh, mantra number. The 
19 to 23. And then we will do uh, the, the 12th mantra. So we will start doing the 19th karika next week. Okay, so we have covered play. The main thing is we have studied in Omkara, in Omkara meditation. The fundamental thing to remember is I remember A stands for waking state, U stands for dream state, M stands for the sleep state. The most important thing is at the M level, the entire universe. Beyond that Makara is my real nature, which is not a matra. That is why it is called as a matra. Thuriyam is called as a matra. Okay. So I will stop here. Uh, the open uh, Mandukya Upanishad. And uh, next week we will start with this slide 1038. Oh, oh, Namada, oh, Namidam, oh, Namat, oh, Namudachade, oh, Nasya, oh, Namathaya, oh, Nameva, was Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. I have no points in the chat box. In case you want to ask any questions, you are free to ask them. Yeah, Nandu, go ahead. Uh, Hare sir. Uh, the uh, Mandukya Upanishad, I just like my understanding, uh, just to correct. I think initial seven mantras are a little bit uh, as a, like a theory and maybe uh, eight mantra onwards is a little bit as a practical. So just to, uh, I mean, we can maybe do that practice. Let's uh, how uh, the Omkar, uh, the uh, pronouns, uh, the uh, Omkar Jap also what we do, you know. And yes. keep, keep, keeping like a reminder that when we say like a uh, um, uh, and that silence and that silence is like a turiyam and that is my real nature. Correct. See what happens is the first seven mantras, especially the seventh mantras, see the waking state, dream state, and the sleep state, it is an adhyaropa state. That means you start. As if you are a junior student, you say there is a waking state, there is a dream state, there is a sleep state. So the Upanishad takes you from where you are today. So Adhyaropa is a superimposition. That means I am Atma, in me the waking comes, in me the dream comes, in me the sleep comes. And what does it say in the seventh mantra? In the seventh mantra, it says that the three states are Nitya. The seventh mantra is, is the negation of the three states. It is the Apavada. It is Adhyarupa Apavada. That is the theoretical aspect of the entire methodology of revealing who I am. Now, some people they can just meditate on the seventh mantra itself and realize. I will be doing some meditation on the seventh mantra after the 30th verse of Bhagavad Gita. I will take the seventh mantra and then we will do some meditations on Avyavaharyam, Shantam, Shivam. We will do some simple meditations on those. But like you are saying, yes. It is a theoretical portion of what the Veda is trying to reveal. So, Adhyaropa Apavada is done. In the seventh mantra, what, does, what do we start with? Na Anta Pragnyam. Na Bahish Pragnyam. I am not the baker. I am not the dreamer. 
I am not a seeker. This I stands for what? It stands for something different than the waker, dreamer and the sleeper. Not only the waker, dreamer and the sleeper, but also the world of the waker. See, well, that is how you should, you should meditate. This world of the waker is the Trapancha. That is the Virat, Ishwara. So, the seventh mantra in the first portion of the seventh mantra, it is a negation. It is the Apavada portion. Then comes Shantam, Shivam, Advaitam, Chaturtham, Manyante. Those are the descriptions of my real nature, which is Atma. So, you can, I mean, what you're saying is, you can, you're right in saying that maybe the seventh mantra are the, are the theoretical portion. You can look at the Omkara meditation as the practical portion. It is not, it is not wrong. It's correct. But the twelfth mantra, which we will be doing a little bit later after we do the Karikas, the twelfth mantra is exactly the same as the seventh mantra. So, if you are a, if you are an uttama dikari, you if you are if you are if your mind is ready for the if your mind what, readiness means what the mind is pure mind is not it is not wavering it can grasp the it is number one it is pure number two it has got the concentration uh, ability. And the third aspect is, it is expansive nature. You see, the mind has to have these three features. But if the mind has got these three features, the seventh mantra, Shantam, Shivam, Advaitam, will click for you immediately. Immediately you will say, yes, I can know. See, understanding this Turiyam is moksha. Understanding the Turiyam is becoming Turiyam itself because the moment you have dropped everything else in the world, you are with your own nature. That is your ultimate, which is Veda is revealing to you. Okay, so you are correct, and I, I I can go on and on with this, but I will stop here because there's a lot of things to be learned in future apart from this. Today is just the beginning of Omkara meditation. It's a very beautiful meditation and it's a direct meditation to realize your nature. I mean, it is, it has been taught by, uh, I mean, almost all the scholars of Vedanta, they teach Omkara meditation, including Swami Chinmayananda. Everybody has taught this. Now, it's very, very powerful. And especially when you go through the Mandukya Upanishad, the way we have done it, then you understand the significance behind this meditation. And then it clicks. Uh, is it clear, Nando? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank one you. more point. Uh, this yeah. is not maybe from this, uh, uh, what like Upanishadha subject, but maybe some other scriptures, and but which is a little bit contradicting and just uh, need your advice whether that we should keep that thought away. Because like Akar, Ukar, and Makar, it is uh, referred to as a three, three devas, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. And uh, the like a relation also like uh, it is referred to three uh, gunas also, Sattva, Rajatam. But I think that will create a little more complexity when we bring those thoughts. No, no. You see, if you, are, if you have practiced the knowledge of Mandukya Upanishad, and you have known the mantras, akara, ukara, makara, makara, the significance behind this. Suppose you have done the meditation on omkara first like this. Then it is very easy for you to accept everything about omkara which is said in all other Upanishads. Like Brahma, Vishnu, uh, Maheshwara, these are all the three states. I mean, it's nothing but it's, it is this creation, sustenance and uh, resolution. They are happening. It is an experience for all of us. So it is it is true. But then ultimately, what is the truth? Ultimate truth is there is a substratum behind this Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara. And that substratum is what is Turiya. So similarly in 
Bhagavad Gita. He talks about Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. You can take these, these three also as three padas, as three, as three versions of the world. The world, according in, in different places, the universe is described in different ways. It can be described as panchakoshas. It can be described as three avastas. It can be described as three sharirams. It can be described as three gunas. It can be described as the past, present, and future. Beyond all the three, time is this timeless. So uh, once you understand the concept behind this Adhyaropa and Apavada, if that is clear, and then beyond Adhyaropa and Apavada is this Turiyam or Amatra, then there is no confusion. You accept everything. Whatever Veda says about Gunatita, 14th chapter of Bhagavad Gita very clearly says you cross over these gunas. Now gunas belong to what? It belongs to Prakriti. Now, Prakriti is what? It is this three state only. Prakriti means what? It is, it is nature. Prakriti is the three stage. It is gunas. But also, and who, in the 14th chapter, the Lord itself says, you, one who is a guna, Atita. Atita means who has crossed over the gunas. He becomes the jnani. He becomes a jnani means what? He knows Turiyam is his nature. Jnani's definition is he is he knows the nature of Brahman. He knows nature of Turiyam. You and I can also know, know the nature of Turiyam and free. Ultimately, the knowledge is for us to gain our freedom. So you will uh, you know the significance behind these three. Then you will not get confused with any other thing that they talk about it. You can put all of them together and see it is the same truth which is being revealed in all the scriptures. That is where your expertise should lie. I will be able to understand whatever they say about anything regarding Turiya. Because in every scriptures, whether it is Bhagavatam, whether it is uh, ultimately they are talking about this one reality. And Mandukya helps us to uh, to reach this reality, to know this reality in a very simple way. That is the beauty of Mandukya Upanishad. It is something which is very, very practical. And practical from this point of view of experience of this Turiyam as my real nature. So, Nandu is clear? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Much appreciate. Good. Thank you, Nandu. Uh, Shanta, go ahead. Yeah, I, in fact, just like uh, Nanduji, I had similar thing, feeling that, uh, you know, about the Manduki Upanishad being in two parts. Uh, one is the theoretical and one is the practical. Now, after listening to all this, my question is, is actually this uh, uh, Omkara part, part of Manduki Upanishad, it feels... Um, sort of Shankaracharya has attached it so that we can relate and meditate. No, no, no. Is it, I, I it mean, is I'm not... not questioning Shankaracharya's yeah. knowledge here, not, but I... it is not Shankaracharya's attached portion to the Mandukya Upanishad mantras. No, <laughs> uh, it is not true because before Shankaracharya was his guru, and mm. before his guru, there was a Gaudapadacharya. Yeah. Now, Gaudapadacharya has written a commentary on the 12 mantras, okay. which is what we are studying as 225 verses. So definitely it is not Shankaracharya's addition to the Upanishad, <laughs> but go through the 12th mantra. After you do the 12th mantra, you uh, go through this. Uh, there are some karikas also. Then you try to come to a conclusion. Because you, what like, is... for example, till you do the seventh yeah. mantra, you will not understand the significance behind the first four, six mantras. Six. Similarly, you do the twelfth mantra, and then you will know the significance behind this entire meditation on the three letters A, O, and Ma. 
No, because I was just uh, looking at it that it almost corresponds to the three padas as we learned in the chapter, Correct. you know, it is, it is. six yeah. mantras. Shankaracharya and, uh, says, uh, in his commentary, he says, please refer to my commentary on those uh, verses three, four, five, yeah. uh, and then six, when, when it comes to the commentary on this uh, Akara, Upara, Makara. Makara. Same thing yeah. what he said, he, he brings it out again. Because ultimately the Upanishad wants to us to remember the goal of meditation. The goal of meditation is not, not to know the academic nature of what is the feature of this Akara, Ukara, Makara. And, you, know, you can study that in detail and understand, but that is not the goal. The goal is Kuriya. The goal is silence. Mm -hmm. And in that silence, can we accept my nature as Turiya? As Shantam, as Shivam, Shivam. as Advait. Can I accept that? You see, that till you are till your intellect can accept that as yeah. your nature. Mm -hmm. You should continue the meditation. You should continue listening to the scriptures. Okay. See, the, uh, okay. uh, you, you, you have to listen to the scriptures till you're convinced. After that, you don't have to go, come to the scriptures also. Because the scriptures, I mean, in the fourth chapter, uh, Shankaracharya himself says, he, he in the last uh, fourth chapter, he, towards the end of the fourth chapter, he talks about all the realized masters. What have they realized? They have realized this Turiyam as their nature and it is something totally different than what they have realized as weaker dreamer and sleep. Turiyam is also something which is our nature, but that nature is hidden to us. I don't know. See, I don't know that that is my real nature. And through these talks, through these, uh, uh, you can say, meditations, you can, but meditation is extremely important when you are trying to go towards the last segment of realization. Because almost all the concepts which you have built on yourself, you have to drop. And that dropping takes place when you steadily are able to move step by step, step by step, step by step. Slowly you say, okay, I, I will meditate on this mantra, meditate on this mantra. The mind gets close to understanding Thuriyam as your nature. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, Shanta? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, no, I would just, uh, it was just a feeling because of it. There was so much of connection between the Omkara and the first, you know, yes. um, the three, four, It five, is supposed six, to uh, connect. See, the yeah. Upanishad wants you to connect. Mm -hmm. The Akara, it wants you to connect with your entire waking state. And then, you see, in just one word, Upanishad wants you to take the entire the entire manifest world, it wants you to make it unmanifest. Just by chanting Om and then silence. Again, chanting Om and silence. The entire manifestation and unmanifestation which happens, the manifestation is Vibhuti of uh, Ishwara. It is 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Unmanifestation is entire 11th chapter where Lord uh, Arjuna says, let me know everything is in you, the consciousness that uh, you, uh, Lord Krishna. So consciousness is the is the ultimate adhishtha. So what, so my question now, I mean, another question I've got is, um, I think you mentioned that if you do Akara Upasana, come out, do Ukara and then come out and do Makara and come out, you're not going to get to Thuriyam, but if you do Continue. So, if you go from flow from a akara to ukara and ukara to makara, then you can reach the thuriyam, you know, avastha or understanding thuriyam. Why is it so? 
Yeah. What, what is the last question? What is the last portion of the question? What is? Uh, the thing is, uh, when you do it independently, I think you mentioned, or I don't know whether I got it wrong, that if you do only akara and come out of it, and then do makara, come out of it, and I mean ukara and then makara, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you will not get the thuriyam uh, point. Yeah. See, but if you go this, from this one to what, another, this is what Shankaracharya says in his commentary. He says there are two benefits. One is the spiritual benefit, another is the material benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, he also says that you can meditate on Akara and then you can stop with it. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you can stop with you can start with Ukara and stop with it, Akara and stop with it. Each of them, the Shastra itself gives the benefits. But he says ultimately, if you, in one meditation session, if you can do the entire three three uh, 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 three meditations together, mm -hmm. you will get the spiritual benefit of Turiyam. I have personally, uh, I can say that the, that Akara, Ukara, Makara, if you can do as one meditation, it is much more easier mm -hmm. to come to the Turiyam level and to realize your own Atma as pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. You don't, I mean, this is my, I'm talking to you from my personal experience, but Shankaracharya does say that you can meditate on Akara separately, Ukara separately, and Makara separately. Then in the Karikas, there will be, uh, will be, uh, will be going through some techniques which Gaudapada Acharya is going to su suggest also. So uh, let's, let's keep this conversation open till you come to the 12th mantra because there are some other uh, techniques which are, you have to learn. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that that's fine. I was just not, you know, I wanted to know what, why it was like this, but probably when I go through the session of... Uh, Correct. The yeah, session just wait itself, for the, the, uh, the karikas on this because yeah. then you will it will become a little bit more clear. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, in Bhagavad Gita, Ganesh, you are saying this. Uh, Bhagavad Gita says, "I am that pranava. I am that yeah. om. You know, it is true. It is. Uh, you know, in Prashna Upanishad, you get a very beautiful section of Om Kara meditation. Very beautiful. Very nice. You <laughs> see, Om Kara meditation in three, four Upanishads is taken up. Chandogya Upanishad, Vardhanak Upanishad, Prashna Upanishad, Katho Upanishad. In uh, uh, Kaivalya Upanishad, see, the, uh, this meditation is extremely powerful and uh, it, you can take it in any form. You know, you can do this meditation in any form. You can just uh, sit quietly and say, oh, you know, that is, uh, and say that this is Pranava. Pranava means it is the name of God. Om is the name of God. And it can reach you. It can, uh, I mean, it's got tremendous benefits. I, I can go on and on with it, but uh, it's very, very beautiful. Yeah, Vijaya, go ahead. Amazing, amazing session. I just love the session today because the whole context of Puriyam being an ultimate um, uh, phase where the Prapancha Upashamanam actually needs to happen. And how beautifully that is getting linked to Akara, Okara, Makara. When we do the yoga bhyasa also, when after we finish the yoga, we do the Akara, Okara, and Makara meditation, where we relate, as Nanduji rightly said, Akara is the Bhija mantra for creation because Akara, when we do the yogic, it comes from the Nabhi, uh, the, the, the creation, the stomach. That is where the Lord, the earth is creation of the Lord is. And then when we chant about, it is basically sustenance. I mean, where you have to need to eat to sustain. Then we do the Ukara mantra. Ukara is basically where the breath is coming from the chest, where the center of the emotions of the heart is there, where all your imaginations and all your aspirations and dreams reside. And that is a subtle world. And then we do the Makara mantra. Makara mantra is where we are going further beyond the vasanas wherein you know the desires are seated uh, of course due to ignorance but how we actually you know work out on prapancha upasamana of the physical world and then the imaginative dream world and also the karana prapancha where we are doing the vasana kshayam 
and then going to the Brahmi Stiti, as Lord says in chapter 2, where it actually all the three prapanchas you are doing the upasamana dissolution dissolution of three and coming into that uh, uh, you know the mode of uh, upasamana where it actually silence so all these three it it also says how do you resolve with your mind the, the waking mind has its not only it records it also repeats and it experiences with the waking world and then the second world where the mind it may not have the Jagat Prapancha, but it has the Swapna Prapancha, and then it has its own repercussions of only the recordings, which is replay. And then the third world where you are unaware due to the ignorance, and how each of that is actually, you know, how he introduces um, uh, Turiyam to, uh, as an antidote of all these three. He actually says that all these three are Asat, and then the Turiyam is Sat. That's what I think uh, chapter 17 also the Lord, when he talks about the um, Shraddhatriya Vibhaga Yoga, he introduces Om Tat Sat Iti. He says, I have the three forms, uh, tat, um, the om, om Tat Sat. And he says that that's the reason everything you start, you say with Om. And then you say, this is the only, the Tat Padarda. This is He and that is the Satyam. So He alone is truth. And then whatever you do, you know, Dana, Seva, everything, but without invoking that, the Lord in you, invoking the power of the consciousness in you. All of this is only in Maya or in the realm of Asatya. And then the way you waken up, waking up yourself, enlightening yourself into that area where none of these would have been possible, but for that consciousness in you, which is enabling, as you rightly said, right? When you're in the meditation, that you are the prana which is enlivened by this consciousness. And I am that and the spiritual um, being in which the body is coming and going. I'm the spiritual being in which the experiences are coming and going. I think this is a very, very amazing session. And I love the way you also took us through the three, you know, for everything what a human being do, we have this falashruti. I think the fala, falashruti of the akara, ukara, makara, what I get, right? When I chant akara, when I chant ukara. But whatever I get from akara, it is transient. Whatever I do in Ukara is actually dream. It never existed. It also needs to go the moment I wake up. And then Makara, because I am ignorant. So nothing is that I am going to be. I am going to be an ignorantially blissful state. Mm. So what you really aspire is that as a spiritual aspirant, he actually says that Upashamanam, he says, come to the dissolution where there is nothingness between the two ohms. And that silence is where I lie, wherein your mind is cool and calm down, your desires are given rest to and you are detached, then you are only associated with nothingness. In the sense, not the nothingness, in the sense, it is that Lord where he is, you know, beyond the Shabda Pramana, as you rightly said. So I think that is what he is driving to in verse 12. I'm, I'm really, really excited to uh, see how he does the chap verse 12 and links it up to verse 7. And he connects the micro and the macrocosm. Really looking forward. An amazing session. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Vijay. It's a good, very good summary of what you have uh, said today. Uh, you, have, you have said a lot in terms of uh, you know meditation on the Nabi as a creator. You have said a lot of things and you have been able to connect this to Mandukya Upanishad. Very good. Uh, Shrika, I, I just want to touch up on like what we have just Yeah, yeah, Ganesh. Yeah. <clears throat> See, the, this Mandukya Upanishad, like if we just go through the few karikas and all that, it's a very special compared to the other Upanishads in a sense. One is explained through the various stages of all this uh, sleep and uh, waking state and all that, uh, the Turiyam. And how to reach the Turiyam also it is explained actually. That is where two different parameters are here actually. One is Atma Vichara and another is the Omkara Vichara. But in the very first two mantras, very clearly the Upanishad says is Sarvam Omkara Eva. So what it means is basically the Brahman is Omkara. Omkara is not different from the Brahman. That is why this Omkara is considered as a Pranava. So now how it can be considered same actually? That is what is correlated in both the things. The three stages are explained as A, U, Ma 
and finally amatra is considered as the thuriyam so the omkara is the practical way of reaching that brahman see the abhidhana and abhidhano once we just go through the words actually in the this particular um, upanishad all these words and all it plays a vital role the word a is considered uh, is like a all pervading the moment you cannot utter any word uh, without saying a uh. you cannot word and this whole world of objects the whole external world uh, is considered as nothing but name and forms only so if if we just say one particular say any, any object actually we have to name that shabda and artha that is what that abhidhanam and abhiyaya that is what is emphasized this is how he has correlated very beautifully in this omkara and uh, this uh, um turiya avastha so omkara is the way to reach that brahman that is it is called pranava so if we say if 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 i just say some object uh, say apple it does not say only that I, i remember that whole apple that whole object the configuration that whole thing actually and uh, there are so many words uh, all the words are starting with a only that is why it is representing the jagrat avastha like who is representing the utkarsha that word utkarsha which is used which is the upper lip and we cannot say the we cannot say u without saying a a then only u it comes actually the higher so which is madhyama which comes in between uh, so the dream state is in between ma is the resolution when you say ma both the lips are closed both a and u dissolved in that ma so this whole thing is a very symbolic form the om is a symbolic form and the representation of that brahman individual avu ma like prashna upanishad and all they have which is the materialistic part but the saying this entire om and that final silence is representing the brahman itself there is ekam eva advitiyam there cannot be two different things actually everything is that brahman only so the om is nothing but a brahman that is the representative so the, the in from that point of view this upanishad is extremely important to understand uh, the each and uh, everything maybe in the subsequent karikas we'll have more clarification on this so i mean this is what is my understanding uh, uh, good venkatesh entire, thank you uh, yeah thank you thank you very very good summary uh, you have attended most of the talks before also on mandokya so i'm sure you you're you're able to pick up a lot in terms of uh, the essence of this but ultimately the uh, the the real significance is only when you meditate and you reach that state yes you have whatever to meditate we may discuss yeah. in the class whatever we may say sit down quietly chant o stop again chant o stop you do it yourself when you do it yourself whatever experience you get you cannot describe exactly yeah we you see uh, we can go around uh, understanding the karikas understanding this but there is a difference when you listen and when you do it yourself that personal experience of doing that meditation yourself you cannot describe it i i have uh, you know there is nothing which we can which can, we can because that is that is our nature see they say ultimately this nature cannot be described it cannot be described by thoughts it cannot be described by words but we are trying to go through that through whatever we know in the world thank you vengesh it's it was a good uh, uh, it was a good summary of your understanding of this upanishad thank you anybody else has any other question shekhar ji the moment somebody says uh, i know thuriyam or i can explain the nirguna tatva that itself is a falsity because yatha vacha nivartante aprapya manasatah you yourself said that <laughs> yes <laughs> thank yeah. you that's so right. that is, that is how it is explained thuriyam is concept, like see that anita grahanam and uh, all that uh, agrahanam so thuriyam is considered a grahanam from the point of om actually this is uh, way it has been put into this uh, the whole uh, 
uh, Upanishad actually. The, I mean, this Upanishad is so extraordinary and so uh, important. It is considered like, you know, knowing the Brahman, this one Upanishad is enough. <laughs> That's correct. I, I, yeah. I would definitely agree with that because yeah. it, uh, it it has got so much of knowledge and it, which we can experiment ourselves. You see, the uh, beauty of this Upanishad is practical. Yeah, it's not just it is not just just telling us that this is the way Ashabda, Asparsham, Arupa, Magandam. It is not yeah. just telling us that scientific, but yeah. it is it is it is telling us how you and I can experience that because when it comes to experience, there is nothing called nothing which can be compared to a waking state, dream state, and sleep state because everything is there. And in waking itself, you are supposed to re you are supposed to understand that Turiya. Purely understanding, Shankaracharya uh, again and again repeats this. It is only your understanding of this Turiya will give you the final result. Purely understanding, and then he goes. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things to learn in the in the in the Arikas and in the. In the mantras which come in the second, third, fourth chapter, it's a very, very composite, composite scientific uh, approach towards the entire spirituality. Okay, I think uh, we have covered quite a lot. Uh, keep keep putting your questions as and when it comes, and then you can always put it in the chat box. We can we can discuss that. And uh, I wish you all a very for those people who are celebrating Ganesh Chaturthi today in the US, you can uh, you can I wish you all a great celebration and then we'll continue the Mandukya next week. Thank you. Namaste. Hari Om. Thank you. 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 Thank you.